Good afternoon, fellow compatriots. I propose a moment of silence for the memory of those of our fellow citizens that we have lost in the shootings that took place. And today, when one of our comrades, Agayin Dejrema, was being led to the police by the police. May their precious souls rest in a peace. When the Tonga speaking people came to settle in this territory we call Zambia today in the fourth century, they crossed Magoya River and they said Pazabuka or Kuzabuka, meaning we have crossed over from where the name Mazabuka comes. They settled peacefully in this republic before all of us came to settle in what we call Zambia today. Almost 800 years to 1,000 years later, the Bembas, Lozis, and the other tribes came to join the Tonga-speaking people in this republic we call Zambia. And each of these tribal nations settled peacefully. Yes, there were tribal conflicts, but at the end of the day, our founding fathers and mothers united. They lived together in peace. And the evidence of massive social economic development by the Tonga speaking people, before all of us came to settle here, is that in Mumbai. They had local, local trade in terms of agriculture, you know, commerce, and trade with other international you know, trade partners. And you can find all these evidence of copper crosses at Mumbele. The Portuguese were some of those traders that came. And this was way before slavery came. Fellow citizens, by the time that the BSA company to pursue commercial interests, as well as extending the influence of the British, under one man Rhodes, Cecil Rhodes, we, the people of Zambia, and I'm speaking on behalf of the men and women who came ahead of us, the founders of what we call Zambia today. Before they came, they started peacefully. And after the coming of the BSA company, which acquired this entire territory as a property of a company, they created by 1900 what they called Northeastern and Northwestern Rhodesia. And the BSA company, imposed hostile taxes and it was these taxes that caused the natives to unite to begin to fight against the tax, tax injustice because they're being forced to pay taxes as a way to force them into cheap labor to work in the mines and the raw projects that uh, the bsa company was pursuing in africa they wanted to extend the british uh, empire's influence from cape to cairo this was the objective of the bsa company and all of us know this Fellow citizens, the men and women who founded our republic, the nationalists, didn't look at tribe. They suffered the abuses at the hands of the BSA companies, which led us to control, and the crown took over the running of our territory in 1924, and we were called Northern Rhodesia. Of course, that was by, by, by 1911, when we were called Northern Rhodesia, after the amalgamation of northeastern and northwestern Rhodesia into northern Rhodesia. Now I'm talking about these facts that you can understand where this country is coming from. That there are many red seas, there are many hurdles that our country has faced. But from the prophetic crossing of Magoya River by the Tonga speaking people and they said to Azabuka, Zambia has always faced such hurdles, but the people have crossed. From that act of the Tonga speaking people, brothers and sisters, are from the Tonga land. We, the people of Zambia, can learn something that we must cross our Red Seas. Just like the children of Israel, who are crossed their Red Sea, they crossed the Jordan. What they are facing today calls 
for the rekindling of that spirit. We have to rekindle the rekindling of that spirit of fighting for proper self rule, proper self determination as a country. Fellow citizens, when the men and women fought for independence, when they were fighting for the right to vote, which unfortunately the current PF regime has taken for granted, those men and women united. They said we cannot have three Africans making one vote. The brutal federal police force, which was created as a force to fight men and women who wanted to fight for freedom, who were seeking self-determination, many of them died. But they never gave up on the vision to free this country and hand over a united republic to the generation of our fathers. Those men and women united, they faced the brutal federal police force. The federal police force went across the country to stop all forms of meetings that were aimed at uniting the country. They imposed it by and rule in so many ways. But they realized that as long as the federal police force was using by and rule, independence was not going to come. And they came up with a national creed, one Zambia, one nation. That was supposed to be a unity of purpose. And when it comes to unity, it's not about you like and you don't like. They showed us what to do when times are hard. When you don't have any other option but to unite for the sake of the republic, for the sake of Zambia. We only have one Zambia. As the Bible says in Deuteronomy, I think chapter 32, it says, if not chapter 32, I'll correct the verse. But I'm talking about the verse which says, when the Almighty created nations, He allocated nations in, or boundaries in accordance with the sons of Adam, in accordance with the number of the people settled, who settled in the land. And therefore, all of us fellow citizens ought to know that this is the only country that we have. The Federal Police Force killed many of our founding fathers and mothers. Those who are fighting for freedom. Those who stood up for Zambia. Those who stood up for the birthing of the Republic of Zambia. They took the bullets and died. Why did they die? They died because they wanted an independent Zambia to have men and women in the police service who are going to save the people of Zambia. They did not die in order to create another even more brutal a police a force. What we have today is reminiscent of the brutal federal police force. But I want to say this to you fellow citizens, that we have so many professional men and women in the police service, just like the Zambia Army, the Zambia Air Force, Zambia National Service, you know, prisons, and the intelligence community. But the problem that we have right now is the laying of this institution under siege, under capture by the PF regime. All of us are aware that the moment the PF regime rose to power and all the criminal elements who you know, got together, they ensured that. They started, they ensured that they began to plan for what we are seeing today. How did they place their police service under capture? They began to recruit their party loyalists. And you cannot call those men who were recruited in the most corrupt manner who were recruited in a manner which was, which was not transparent, we cannot call those as the real you know, police. The real policemen and women are professional. They went through competition, proper competition. They went through interviews and were properly trained to serve this republic, and we know them. But these professionals who are advising, we know that they are advising the current looters, but they can't understand because when they're dealing with a criminal mind, a criminal mind does not care about who is injured and who dies. They don't care about that because they are criminals. A criminal values property over life. A criminal would kill over money. A criminal would kill over a wristwatch. That's a criminal mindset. And this is what we are seeing happening under the PF regime. And this is totally unacceptable. How can, after fellow citizens, about 56 years of our independence. How can we wake up today to find that the same kind of force that the federal police use is the same force that is being applied on the citizens? How can 
you expect the police to carry, for instance, life and ammunition. When they are going to face citizens who are not armed, citizens who are simply standing up for their rights, since when did it become a crime to accompany any political leader to the police station? A police, all police stations are public places. And you can't stop the people of Zambia to go to public spaces. The police is our police. It is not the PF police. All police buildings are public you know, property, just like markets or roads. And therefore, the citizens have the right to go to the police. And the sub police, when I'm talking about maintaining law and order, how can you attack citizens? How can you open your fire on the citizens who are just standing? They are not carrying any offense weapons unless you show us the evidence. They are just standing there. They are accompanying their leader. Even during the struggle for independence, there was solidarity. Supporters accompanied their leaders to courts. They accompanied them wherever they went. Look at South Africa. Zambia helped to free South Africa. The people of South Africa have the right to demonstrate. The people of South Africa can go on the streets at any time as long as they are not destroying property or they are not attacking ordinary citizens. What has happened today can never go without comment. And it can to be the hour that innocent citizens who must enjoy the protection of state agencies that they were killed in court blood like that. That's brutal. Murder. What has happened is murder and is a crime against humanity. Here is a state prosecutor who left his home. He left his wife and children. And wife and children were expecting their father to return home. And this state prosecutor, from what we have learned so far, he goes to a restaurant to just go and have breakfast to wait for the state of Zambia to work for all of us. And what does he meet there? A bullet. Killed. Murdered. Brutally murdered. Fellow citizens, if this is what we call leadership, I for one, and we in the UPP, have a problem with this. If when we speak about this matter, as you say, we belong to China, we are mad. We would rather be called mad. And please keep your normal behavior. If yours is normal, we would rather be called mad people. Even the Bible says, Woe unto he who is at ease. When there is a cause, when there is a cause to stand up and fight for what is good for all. The police service must not be there to abuse citizens. Of course, you're not yet privy to the fact of concerning the summoning of HH. But what you are saying is that on the basis of what has, what has been happening, we can clearly see that what has been happening is abuse. How can an individual, since the PF took over power, be summoned to the police, be arrested 15 times, and all those cases have not been prosecuted successfully? It simply means that it's, it's obvious. And if there's any criminality, if there's any a criminal or evidence which is incriminating, incriminating HH, why has it taken this regime to wait until this, this time? They rose to power in 2011. Why wait until now? This one you are now, you are, you are, you are now going for the citizen? This is totally unacceptable. It's very clear. And any known person can start their ulterior motives. And all of us ought to stick together. To repatriate this country from what has happened, what, what, what is happening. And we are appealing to the leadership. If I told you are worthy to be called leaders, that please, you cannot uh, put your personal interest or private interest first. We have Zambia before us. Holding on to, holding on, on to power is not to wait the blood of a single person. Why should blood be shed on our streets, on our soils? We are standing on the soils that took so much blood during the struggle for independence. And we cannot continue on this path. We want the police to be given the professional space that they need to be freed from all kinds of capture. And the same applies to all institutions of the state. This is our call. And it's not too much to ask for. The citizens of Zambia must be given space to demonstrate peacefully. They must be given space to hold meetings freely. 
this is the country that they have. This is the country that we have. And it's what we are calling for. What has happened and what is happening in our republic cannot be you know, watched. We cannot stand at ease. No, not at all. And this is our journey. Look, look at those people that have died in their own country that they must have equal protection in the law. They wake up on the street. I mean, they wake up sorry, from their homes. They go and they are not uh, fighting anybody. And that point, you know, from what we can see, we have not seen any evidence of violence. These are peaceful, you know, party members of the UK. And I believe that time has come for all of us across, you know, political groupings to unite and stand up for what is right in our country. Time has come for all of us as citizens to unite. When I'm talking about the unity of political groupings, it's about time that we put all these personal egos aside and let us put Zambia first. We believe it's about Zambia first and time has come for common action. We need an action to place the police service under forensic audit. We want to audit all kinds of recruitments that have taken place. And if the police service has been infiltrated by criminal elements, by people who are not serving national interests, who are not serving the interests of the police, we, the citizens of Zambia, can prosecute that case. And we call on the civil society, we call on the church, we call on all groups in the Republic of Zambia to unite and ensure that justice prevails. We have to prevent more deaths because what we are seeing right now is very clear and gives us a gloomy picture of where, where we are going. We have to stand up. This country is facing numerous you know, problems and we have said we cannot give priorities to one HH. HH is simply being abused. There's no two way about it. And when it comes to the abuse of any citizen, all of us must unite. Touch one, touch all. Touch one person, touch all the citizens. Touch one tribe, touch all. Because we are united. We are one Zambia, one nation. And that's why we are calling on all the citizens to begin to work together. Please, let us refuse division. Wherever you are, know that we are one Zambia, one nation. Let us unite. Let us not be divided by a people that have no national agenda. What they have is a personal agenda. We do understand that the men and women in uniform are under siege. They are under clear siege and there's no two about it. And we can prove this kind of case. There are many people who have been retired in personal, in personal interest or corruption interest. They have been retired and they have not been paid. So it simply means that they are using the power that they have to serve their personal interest. Power must be used to serve the people of Zambia. And this is something that all of us must fight for. We in the UPP have been giving alternative, che I mean, or checks and balances with evidence-based solutions to the country. We have said, time has come to scrap off all these bodies of the state, you know, institutions of the state that have centralized the power at the top. We need to take part where the people are. And we must put the people of Zambia first in land matters in trade and commerce. China does not come to Zambia because China loves Zambia. The Lebanese don't come to Zambia because they love Zambia. They come here because they love our water, they love our land, they love our mineral resources. And therefore, any sensible government must put the citizens first. The country is using, I mean, the country is losing huge amounts of money through illegal trade of diamonds, illegal trade of, of gold, illegal trade of, of emeralds. Even through fraudulent accounting in the mines, billions have been lost. And all those billions that have been lost, they are enough to clear this country's debt. Zambia does not need to depend on anybody. The country, this country is self-sustaining. We are a country that is so endowed with all the resources that we need that we cannot be going with a plate to beg. This country must stand on our own. This country is not a poor country. When you look at the balance of Zambia, you look at the assets that we have, you can agree with me that this country is, is rich. What we are lacking is a visionary and firm leadership to put this country on the right path and to put the people first, to put national interests first. And we ought not apologize over putting our country first. And therefore, concerning fellow citizens, these atrocities that are going on, the crimes against humanity, it's about time that we documented. Zambia clearly needs international help. We need international intervention. What is happening in this country, I can assure you, needs international intervention. Because we are under siege. Yes, all of us must unite. Let us begin to work together for the sake of Zambia. Let us liberate our country. 
But at the end of the day, let us know that all these crimes against humanity that are being perpetrated, they must be brought before the ICC. The PF regime must be indicted for these crimes that they are committing. Because these things that we are seeing I can assure you, they have potential to plunge this country into a deep crisis. We don't want a crisis. We are peace-loving citizens. But this culture of peace, it ought to be sustained and must be supported by those who are in the governing authority. How can any sensible leader issue a statement that these things that are happening have been happening? They happen to Juba, they happen to other regimes. Is that the kind of thinking that we need? That people were killed during the, uh, the colonial government or they were killed in the Unipi government, therefore we must kill? This is the more reason why the people of Zambia said no to the MMD. Because they wanted to put an end to police brutality. So you cannot, you cannot be justifying the wrongs. That because the MMD government is still, therefore we must steal. Can you see the thinking of the people that we have? Are these the people that as a country we can continue to entrust leadership with? How can somebody say all these things? No, because these things happened. No, because Tiruba was tried. And therefore we must continue to try the people. Unfairly. Do you see the thinking for the citizens? This is what the recycling has done in the politics of the land. Because when you have the same kind of people that you have recycled for too long, this is the end result. Because they think that that is normal. Some of them, when I'm talking about recycling, they said when the party structures of the MMD, some of them they were key ministers, and all key ministries have been taken over by the same people who served under, 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 under some of them, partly under UNIP, some of them under MMD, under, in all the, the, the three, uh, the, under the three presidents who served the MMD. And they are their key ministers. And the few are there, those who didn't serve as ministers, they are just their passengers. There are many people who are professional, not many, sorry, a few are professional, I'm talking about the cabinet, but the few who are professional are under siege. Cabinet is under siege. Security wings are under siege. And the siege you are talking about is in form of corruption, which you can prove. Corrupt elements, indisciplined, there are still cabinets that are disciplined as this one that we have. This is total indiscipline. And we are saying, please, don't divide us. And we, the people of Zambia, must unite. We, the people of Zambia, must speak together as one. Let us refuse tribal divisions. Let us stick together. There is no Rosi, there is no Bemba, there is no Tonga, there is no Kaonde, there is no Lunda, there is no Ngoni, there is no, no Chewa, there is no Namwanga, there is no Mamwe, there is only one Zambia, one nation. We must unite in our diversity. We must value the diverse you know, cultures that we have. We must appreciate them and decide that the diversity of our culture is what makes us beautiful, that we must stick together and build a strong republic so that each and every tribe of Zambia needs not feel annihilated. This is very important. It is no wonder we in the APP keep saying that. It's about time that when it comes to appointments, there must be a deliberate policy to tribally balance, you know, cabinet tribally balance uh, uh, controlling officer positions, tribally balance all positions in government, including security wings. Because each and every tribe must feel equal, must be free, must feel to be acted to be fully you know, part of this republic that we call Zambia. This is the nationalism that we in the UPP are talking about reclaiming. And we ought to work together to reclaim the lost glory. Zambia is no longer respected in the Committee of Nations. How can a country which is brutally killing our uh, own citizens who are not even violent? Those people they are not violent. Go to other countries. People go on the streets in America. People are protesting. They think that, that Donald Trump's uh, election was stolen. People are going on the streets. And the police in America has not responded by brutally killing citizens on the streets. And we are talking about millions that are going on the streets. How about those people? You can't even count them. Those are few people. We have, what has happened to crowd control? That's why we have we have convinced. Why, why, why can't let professionals do their work? Did you go to use our money, our taxpayers' money, to go and buy the equipment, to go and buy guns and ammunition to kill the citizens? Ninda Are you using your father's money? Are you using your mother's money or your grandfather's money?
you need to understand that even that common person who is selling tomatoes on the street, that person pays tax. Those are women who are waking up every morning hoping that they are going to excel, they are going to prosper in their own republic. There are many young people today, some have finished with, doctor, with, with, with the medical degrees, others are nurses, biomedicals, engineers. They are on the streets, there are no jobs. The PO found the economy growing at 7%. It has gone to negative. It's negative one. And we believe that by the end of that we need negative two, negative three. Meaning that we have, it, in terms of decline, we are talking about 10 points. Or, or, or 10% there about. Now when you do actual computations, but that is actually more than that. When you look at the actual growth, that 7% and the, you look at the decline. This is totally unacceptable. These are things that we must be talking about. And when it comes to Zambia, everyone must be brought on board. Whether you are in a party which is not in the government, or a party in the government, or to you not. And I want to say this to the people, those genuine PF members. Because I do know that even the PF party is under capture. I want to say this to genuine PF members, wherever you are across the country. Look, take a piece of paper. Take your pen. Write the list of cabinet ministers. Look at permanent secretaries. Ask yourself, where are those people there when we formed the, the PF? Where were they? What did they do to you? What did you go through? I'm talking to genuine PF members. Let us remember what you went through. The violence that you went through. We know that some of the people who are at the center of, of, of this, you know, planning the violence and leasing violence on us, they are not just in the PF alone, but they are also in opposition. Some of you can, I mean, we can list them, you know them. But I'm, what I'm saying genuinely is that, look at the list of who is controlling your party, your PF today. And these people will support it. Even in their rigging scheme, wherever you are as general PF, did you fight for PF in order to let the same criminal elements take over the power to come and hijack your power? Is that what you said, Bamaka? If that is Bamaka, when you are every morning, you are lining up to get a CD back, if that's the PF you fought for, then support them. But I want to say that you two are in danger. Chilipa Muzako Chapita, Mawa Chilipaliwe. Chilipa Muzako Chapita, Mawa Chilipaliwe. Uu, Sri Ramutembo Amubie, no wako ine, upokwa. Meaning, if you can't help to carry your friend's load, even what you are carrying will be taken away from you. This is where Zambia is rich, and if there is any political leader, unless he's a very, very, very stupid political leader, who thinks that you see these things happening to your friend and say, oh, no, 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 it's for him. Now we chance, then you are very stupid. Number one. If that's the kind of thing that happens, then you have a brain, a brain of a god. You can't smile when it's what is happening. Tomorrow it will be on you. We need to stop this culture. We must be united to stand and stop this culture. If any Zambian political leader must be defeated, he or she must be defeated through a fair and genuine election and not through the abuse of state, abusing state institutions. That cannot be said a victory. If a church must lose the elections, let him lose genuinely. Don't unleash, unleash state agents and fair. And I'm not talking about the, you know, you know, privatization and many other useless things that we're talking about. As important as these subjects are, a church was not in the cabinet. He was not among the people who decided that, that there must be privatization in the country. He was not there. They decided. And therefore, you cannot go to prosecute a people who are given, given contracts as consultants. Who gave the contracts? We must hear the story firstly from the person who gave the contracts. And this is very important. If we are talking about a commission investigations, everything must be comprehensive. And there shouldn't be any sacred house, especially all those who served that cabinet of the MMD, which destroyed the country. This is what we call justice in the land. And do we in the APP believe in justice for all? Not for a few criminals. It must be justice for all. All the citizens, everyone to even rich or poor, all of us are equal before the law. And the equality before the law must be experienced. We must live it. We must see it. This is the Zambia that I believe our founding fathers' mothers fought for. They didn't fight, they didn't remove 
the federal, the brutal federal police force to replace it with another even more brutal a police force. The brutality you are seeing is totally unacceptable. How much blood will the land continue to take? Look at what happened during the, the, the gassing. How many citizens died? And it's just gone quite like that. Ambassador Food issued a statement to one that there are so many crises that this country is facing, corruption and many other crises. If the same energy that we unleash on some of the things that are not a priority, we can unleash it to recover the money stolen. There is still the money. This is the government. It has become the first government that steals the money for, for donors and then they use the public funds to repay the donors. Quite. They steal the money. It goes in their personal pockets. Then they go to the treasury. They get the money to repay the donors. And the country is quiet. We are not going to be silent over these matters. Zambia is the only country that we have. And this advice we are giving to you is timely. There is no individual on earth who can defeat the people power. When you read the so-called constitution, which is not a constitution, because Zambia has no constitution, it clearly says the courts derive their power from the people. The same change too, which you've been amending of the Zambia Independence Act, section 65 of the laws of England, clearly again it says that, talking about the executive orders, that they derive the power from the people. And that some paper says, we the people, the people of Zambia are not funk to sophistry. The people of Zambia are still very much in charge of their country. That's what I'm saying. Power, the power is ours. The power is ours. It's not for a few, few criminals. And this world is replete with examples. Whoever thought Mama Gadda would fall like that? Osin Mubarak and that president of Madagascar who rigged the elections and they had their water plan according to him. But after rigging the election, he succeeded actually. The country rose. It was a countrywide uprising and they were not violent. All they said is show us, here we are, count us who voted for you. And if you think that this is too far, if you think this can't happen in 2021, if you tamper with elections, then you are testing the patience of the people of Zambia. You are stretching the people of Zambia too much. Today, the people, the police can come out with guns like that and the people appear not to be, like you think they're not doing anything. Zambians, I, one area in which I respect them, especially when they stop, they stop talking too much. There is some kind of an alliance of the people, people to people alliance. The people of Zambia are deciding. Even children know. Go and ask children. They know that change is coming. But we have challenged you that if you do something constructive between now, eight months, seven months, there about is too much time. Right now, your budget is under consideration before Parliament, and I think you are finishing. If by January, to match the about, you show genuine reformation, the people, we the people of Zambia can say, well, why should we change the working government? Let's support them. Let stability continue. I mean, for the sake of stability and continuity. But it must be continuity for what is good. This is our genuine council. The mothering of citizens. It's very, very, very painful. The land has taken too much blood. What has happened is very painful. We mourn with those of our compatriots who have lost their beloved ones today. Cursed be this day. And when the moment come that the perpetrators of these injustices are going to be brought to justice. And we must unite over this. We once again stand in solidarity with HH and we are saying these abuses against him, these are abuses they must stop. If you are lacking strategy of wisdom, find wisdom. But stop what you are doing. It's dividing the country and if you think that you are destroying, you are like campaigning for him. That's what you are doing. That can, what you are doing has never worked as a strategy. The NIP government with all the vigilantes tried this. It never worked. When time for change came, it came. The men you think you use in the security circles, they are suffering. They have children. And they too are caring about the future of our country. Zambia must unite. And let us not fall for this kind of division that we are seeing. 
What has, what has happened in the Republic and what is happening? Clearly, you can see that this is a clear strategy to turn and elect some people. Where you come up with a political strategy, no, we are going to divide and rule. We we'll simply say that, oh, oh, Tonga is a tribal, this and that, stop that. The Tonga speaking people are honorable people. All the tribes are honorable. And therefore, we the people of Zambia must say no to all forms of division. We have one Zambia, one nation. Fellow citizens, we are monitoring and we shall be speaking to you as we monitor what is happening. We are not going to be quiet over Zambia. We only have one Zambia and let us be one people united. Let us remember prayer. Let us remember to pray. But at the same time, let us continue to raise a cry. And as we raise a cry, let us ask the Almighty, what can we do? You never know that you are the kind of solution right where you are. And we appeal to the Zambians in the diaspora that please, if there is a moment that you ought to contribute to the struggle is now. When they are giving one dollar, five dollars, help us. Let us help our country. Zambia needs a new you know, kind of you know, spirit to come upon the land to rekindle that independence dream and our creed, one Zambia, one nation. Thank you.